pleasant morning to you all, wherever you are joining us from, from which part of the West African region, from Nigeria, it's a pleasant good morning to you. And welcome to the second orientation exercise organized by the African Center of Excellence on Technology Enhanced Learning National Open University of Nigeria for its postgraduate students taking place today, the 23rd of August, 2021. As we begin to set the ball rolling, may I at this moment ask that we all rise for Nigeria's national anthem. seated please once again a very pleasant morning to you all and welcome to this special program designed to furnish our newly enlisted students into the african center of excellence on technology enhanced learning estel with the moody operandi of where to get what how to get what and how to go about searching in the course of their academic expedition. This morning, the African Center of Excellence on Technology Enhanced Learning is set to do just that. And that explains why, from wherever you are hooking up with us today, we will remote our business to just part of the orientation exercise. Before we begin in earnest, may I at this moment recognize especially the visitor of the National Open University of Nigeria. May I also recognize the office of the Honorable Minister of Education. May I also recognize the position of the Chancellor of the University, the Pro-Chancellor and Chairman Council of the National Open University of Nigeria, distinguished Professor Peter Okebukola, the Vice Chancellor of the National Open University of Nigeria, Professor Olufemi Peters. May I also recognize the Deputy Vice Chancellor in charge of academics, Professor Oduma Oju Oduma, the Deputy Vice Chancellor in charge of administration, Professor Isaac Baswat, 
the Deputy Vice Chancellor in charge of Technology Innovations and Research, Professor Monolua Olani. Let me also recognize the Office of the Registrar of the National Open University of Nigeria, Sir Felix Edoka, the Bursar of the National Open University of Nigeria, Dr. Ernest Odega, and the Liberian, Dr. Sally Adam Gambo. It is my pleasure that you just can measure but leave the treasure that I recognize the office of the Center Director, Africa Center of Excellence on Technology Enhanced Learning, Professor Grace Jockton, the Deputy Center Director of the Center, Dr. Vivian Olcha. Let me also recognize academic and course coordinators of ESTEL, ESTEL partners, both industrial and academic. Our esteemed students, those in the meal and those coming on board, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, let me again welcome you to the second ever virtual orientation ceremony of the African Center of Excellence on Technology Enhanced Learning today, 23rd of August, 2021, for its students. It is a business that endeavors to furnish, like we said earlier, the newly uh, admitted students of ASTEL with the rudiments of studying in an open and distance learning environment, particularly with regards to the African Center of Excellence on Technology Enhanced Learning. May I at this moment, in respect to that, invite for the address of the center director. Let me invite Professor Mrs. Grace Jockton for her address and subsequently taking us on a virtual tour. Ma. The Vice Chancellor of the National Open University of Nigeria, Professor Olufemi Peters. The Deputy Vice Chancellor Academic, Professor Uduma Oji Uduma. The DVC Admin, Professor Isaac Bootswat. The Deputy Vice Chancellor Innovation, Technology Innovation and Research, Professor Omolara Olani. The President, Lawe Open University, Professor Goski Alabi. The Deputy Vice Chancellor Academic, the University of the Gambia, Professor Priori Gomez, deans and directors in the university, members of Estelle team, distinguished students, ladies and gentlemen. Good morning. It is my great pleasure to welcome you all to the African Center of Excellence on Technology Enhanced Learning, National Open University of Nigeria. I hope you will discover over the next five, year, five days what I've discovered in the past two years at the African Center of Excellence on Technology Enhanced Learning, which is that you have joined a lively, challenging, diverse, and warm community of virtual learners. Students of the second class of 2020-2021 session, welcome. I'm here to say a few introductory words about the intellectual adventure you are about to undertake. You are at the largest open and distance learning institution in West Africa. National Open University is a mega institution with an active student's population of over a thousand students, about 103 study centers spread across the length and breadth of Nigeria. I want you to know that the entire university community is here to support, sustain, and encourage you as you commit to study at Esther. And so, just a bit of introduction of what the center is all about. Uh, Estel, the Africa Center of Excellence on Technology Enhanced Learning, it's a World Bank 
Afri Association of African Universities, as well as the National Universities Commission uh, supported project. It is run by an international advisory board as well as a sectoral board. And they, the three, organize the activities of the center. The Estel Noun community offers a world-class intellectual experience. You will be exposed to a world-class experience that encompasses both faculty as well as international uh, partners. You will also be exposed to an unparalleled access and diversity in the course of your studies. Part of your intellectual experience will come from the faculty. We also have a class of facilitators, both at national and international level. You will be supervised by experts in your field. You will also have industrial experience within the course of your journey within the, uh, the university. What are the opportunities that you stand to benefit from in the course of your uh, sojourn in the university? Part of it, like I had said earlier, is an industrial experience through the internship programs. You will also be able to have learning visits. There will be opportunity for that. Students of the center will have experience to visit other centers and other institutions that we are collaborating with so that you can learn more on what happens at other uh, institutions. This will be taken care of under the student exchange uh, visit. There will be conferences and workshops which you will also participate in and uh, we expect that you attend. The center is also in a position to support some of you to ensure that you participate fully participate in this international uh, fora. There is the research component of the center, which you will do as a research student, but also again, as a center, there are research opportunities that you could also benefit from. Uh, finally, I think which is also very important is the issue of scholarship. The center offers scholarship to deserving students and the uh, website is there. When admissions are open, I think you, you will be able to uh, um, apply for these scholarships using uh, the website uh, of Estel. Like I said earlier, you have a community of global partners that will offer you support and experience throughout your period. Some of these partners are the Lawe Open University, as you are having them here, and also the University of the Gambia that is also here. Others are the Open University of UK. There are um, institutional organizations such as the South African Council on Distance Education, the University of West England, and so on and so forth. In terms of industrial experience, you will be working with Cisco. You will also be working with companies such as uh, Softcom, to be able to engage and improve on your skill-based uh, trainings. The center through the university offers a 24-7 response desk. The number is there. You can call throughout your time. It will be available to respond. The website address is also there. Our email is there for you to contact us. You can engage us on Facebook. Twitter, and as well as uh, LinkedIn. For those that are in country, we have study centers nationwide, and DEX officers will be there to also support you. The COVID-19 pandemic has brought a lot of uh, challenges to the education uh, sector. Schools were shut down. Institutions were unprepared for e-learning in, in terms of infrastructure as well as capacity. And there was also an economic uh, downturn at the higher education level. And so there was a lot of uh, dropout. But I would like to say that Estel and the National Open University provided outstanding opportunities and support for professional and academic careers throughout the period. And there was no shutdown in the system. This is one of the 
advantages of studying online. And so throughout a uh, short down period, act academic activities went on as indicated in the calendar. Now provides uninterrupted service to its students and at Estel, students will graduate as, at, as and when due. What are the key, uh, what are the keys that you need to actually succeed in studying at uh, the National Open University of Nigeria uh, Center for Technology Enhanced Learning? And I would like to point out a few for you to uh, have at your fingertips. One is that you must fulfill the contract you have entered into. Becoming a student is a contract. There are rules and regulations guiding your engagement as a student. So it is important for you to know what your contract is and abide by the rules in this contract. You have access to your student handbook. You have access to other documents on the website. You can check so that you are very aware of what these contracts are that you need to uh, engage in. You must be able to demonstrate vigor and integrity. As students, you graduate both in character and learning. And so it's important to us that you show integrity in the course of your studies. You will have to reach out to our services. I had earlier indicated a, a list of access that you can reach us. So you can reach us through any of this and our services will be there to support you through the course of your studies. You will engage with education experts and have a good education experience. That you will do through your various uh, programs. And I wouldn't talk much on that because you will be hearing from the program coordinators on that. You need to share and accept honest feedback. Just as we expect feedback from you, we also expect that when we send feedback to you on your performance and other academic engagements, you also should be able to learn. So we will learn from each other going forward on uh, aspects of the, the education. You need to respect the time and resources that is invested in you. We will be talking about facilitation, the time when uh, lecturers will be available online to assist you and we expect that you respect such times and please make yourself available. You are also expected to participate in class activities and assignments which form a component of what you do in terms of assessment. That also will be addressed more fully as we go through. Respect faculty and peers. That is quite important. You respect each other and also you respect the faculty that is here to support your learning. You pursue excellence and respect diversity. Like we said, you will have a diverse class of students. You will have people from different countries, different religion, different gender. You es we expect that you respect this diversity so that there will be unity within the class. You rely on your legs to walk, and you are the driver of these studies. It is you that determines the pace at which you move in this uh, study. You have the time, the energy, and organization to make your learning what you want it to be. Your journey begins today. I want to end by quoting Van Gogh, who said, I dream my painting, and then I paint my dream. You are welcome to the National Open University, and thank you. Okay, you will be shown the virtual tour of uh, the university so that you will have a feel of what exactly the university looks like. Thank you. Welcome to the National Open University of Nigeria, the largest open and distance citadel of learning in Nigeria. At now, we make education affordable, accessible, flexible, credible, reliable, and open to all. With over 500,000 students scattered around the nation, now is ensuring that it brings education to the doorsteps of every Nigerian through the various academic programs she runs. 
from the management of the university, headed by the Vice Chancellor, Professor Lufemi Peters, down to the eight faculties in the university, alongside various centers and directorates, the state of the arts e library, and the directorate of learning content and management system. Now it's poised to make education a lifelong learning process. The African Center of Excellence on Technology Enhanced Learning, ESTEL, is one of the various centers located in the university. A World Bank assisted project supported by Association of African Universities and National Universities Commission, NUE, Nigeria. The center focuses on development of human capacity and research in digital solutions that will lead to the utilization of technology for education and its deployment to other sectors. The center hopes to bridge the technology gap by building capacity in information communication technologies, ICTs, cybersecurities, and digital policies to achieve high levels of digital development on the African continent. At now, the ESTEL runs master's and PhD programs in cybersecurity, artificial intelligence, and management information system. The current Vice Chancellor, Professor Lufemi Peters, has expressed readiness to make it and study in the National Open University a smooth and conducive one. Once again, welcome to the National Open University of Nigeria. Now, Thank you very much. Uh, that brief virtual excursion was to give you a feel of how or what the university headquarters is about. Before we invite the Vice Chancellor of the National Open University of Nigeria for his remark, may I again invite the Centre Director of ISTEL, Professor Chris Joktan, for an addendum. I think I omitted to give us some statistics on the number of uh, students that are uh, here for this second class of the 2020-2021 session. The total number of students are 41. This is made up of 11 females and 30 males. The students cover these countries, the Gambia, the Ga uh, Ghana, Cameroon, and Uganda. So these are the people covering this. Thank you, Ma. May I at this very moment invite the Vice Chancellor of the National Open University of Nigeria, Professor Olufemi Peters, for his remark. Sir. Good morning, to everybody. It's nice to be here. Uh, the Deputy Vice Chancellors who are there present of the National Open University of Nigeria, that of this, that of uh, academics, that of uh, administration, and research and technology. I also want to welcome the Director Estel for this wonderful uh, program that they are about to set on and all the international friends of ours that are with us uh, note that president lawa university Accra, Ghana, professor dosti alabi is present ma you are welcome uh, it's my joy again to have you uh, over the zoom meeting like, just like we did last week i also want to welcome the representative from the university of gambia and all our international students who have taken it uh, a leap into registering with uh, the National Open University of Nigeria, Abuja. I'm glad that uh, the director, Estelle, has just taken you through what it is. And as you, as you will note, the National Open University of Nigeria offers you a world-class open and distance learning experience. We, uh, we have been at this business now for the past 20 years. Yes. I've graduated many students at postgraduate, at PhD level, at master's level, and at undergraduate level. This is the second virtual orientation ceremony under the ESTEL. ESTEL, of course, 
is the African Center of Excellence uh, that was bequeathed to us by the trial of World Bank, Association of African University, and our own National Universities Commission in Nigeria here. And so I want to welcome you to the university. I especially want to welcome you to the program. When you get across this program, I can assure you that there will be various opportunities that will be waiting for you to explore. We know that in this program, we will have opportunities for internships, opportunities for student exchange, and you have opportunities for conference workshops. Uh, these are opportunities that normally you expect to have as a postgraduate student. And that is why I'm very impressed uh, with the program that we're going to lay out for you. And for the next three, four days, you are going to be taking through some of the things you will meet in, during the course of the program. For instance, we are going to take you through the students' learning environment where most of your courses will be held. And I want to encourage you that you should please uh, be very up and doing. Whenever assignments are given, I want to plead that you focus your attention on them. I want you to share and when, whenever an honest request is made of you in terms of feedback, that you do it honestly and sincerely. And that time, okay. and time is very important in this program that you're going to do. Uh, whenever a time frame is given, I want to plead with you also that you give the correct time. I want you to also know that participation in classes is very important. And uh, all your class activities and assignment you will need to do. Now, I am sure that at the, at the time you register for this program, you have some dreams, you have some ambitions. Our, our experience is that by the time we take you through this program, both MSc and PhD in Estel, you will be able to realize your dream. And you will be one of our ambassadors of the National Open University of Nigeria, where open and distance learning is our mantra and perhaps our forte. So on behalf of everybody in the National Open University of Nigeria, I want to welcome you as students into our fold. And I want you to take your lessons very, very seriously. I want I thank the I thank the director of Esther, Professor Joktan, for the wonderful work uh, she has been doing. And I want to thank all the faculty members as well that are going to take this this through their program. I wish you all your speed. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, my Vice Chancellor, Professor Olufemi Peters. They are welcoming uh, new students on this academic expedition. Now I know a lot of uh, newly admitted students and those who are joining us virtually, you will be wondering how could instructional materials and how could some facilities be disseminated to students as far as the Gambia, the Cameroon, and the rest of the places. Well, this is the crux of how we're going to do it. May I at this moment invite an instructional design expert, Professor Juliet Inigbidon, who will be taking us on studying in an open and distance learning environment. Ma. The director, Esther, I want to congratulate you for this um, second orientation we are having here today. And to the students here, I want to join Esther to welcome you to a good learning environment. I am to speak on learning in an ODL institution. First and foremost, we need to know what an ODL represents. What is ODL? When we're talking about ODL, we are referring to open and distance learning. 
And in open and distance learning, we have two things that are combined. We have open learning and you have the distance learning. And with further explanation to this, we're looking at the separation of the teacher and the learner in place or time or both, which means like some of you that are in the Gambia, in Ghana, you are separated by place geographically and in time zone. And that brings in both. Again, we're looking at the use of the missed media cause where and in open and distance learning, you use a missed media cost where, where you have to combine the usage of the prints, radio, television brokers, instructional videos, instructional audios, virtual laboratories, virtual libraries, and virtual conferences. All these are attained in open and distance learning. Again, we could look at open and distance learning as any activity that is within formal, informal, and non-formal education and facilitated by its technology to reduce distance. And what this implies is that with technology, that distance, the geographical distance can be bridged and the difference in time zone can equally be bridged. So with the use of technology, we can bring all these to play. And with this, for those of us that are far away from Nigeria, we will be able to be at a common place without any difficulty. We'll all be able to work together. You'll be in your comfort zone in Gambia, or you are in the comfort zone in Ghana. You could work with somebody in Cameroon and Nigeria without much difficulty. Again, it is mostly self-instruction driven with emphasis on step-by-step -step instructional materials. When we're talking about learning and open a distance environment, it means most of the learning will be done by you, the students. You are the one that will set the space in which you want to learn. You are the one that will define the time in which you want to learn. However, it will be moderated, but you are the center point of your learning. So in this case, we say emphasis is on the learner and not the teacher. In open and distance learning, you are the one that matters. You are the one that is in the center point. And that is why we differentiate the open and distance learning from open and distance teaching or open and distance education. Because in open and distance teaching, it is the teacher that is the center point. But in open and distance education, you, the learner, you are the center point. Now let us have some clarification of some meanings. We have talked about open learning and we are looking at distance learning. We need to clarify them before bringing them together. When you talk about open learning, there are specific things that we need to take note of. First is the open access. In open learning, you have the open access. In this regard, it means no formal entry requirements. And in some cases like ours, there is a moderation there, but in the Access that is totally open. You can walk into an open institution and you will be placed depending on the level in which you are coming in. But in your own case, it wasn't like that. Why? Because you are coming in at the master's level, you came in at a PhD level, and there must be a prerequisite. And that prerequisite has to do with the first degree. So in this area, it was minimal. Again, with open access, you have no examination. You don't need to take examination at the entry point. And I think this was applicable to you. Director, was there any examination for them? 
no examination. That makes it that you are coming in to an uh, ODL environment. However, there would have been other criteria that would have been used to screen and ensure that you'll be able to cope with either your master's or the PhD that you are admitted into. And with open access done in age, we could have someone, if you are able to have your first degree at the age of 20, 18, and you are qualified, you come in to do your master's, you are given the chance. If you are 90 plus, you equally have the chance. There is no segregation. And another beauty of learning an open and distance environment, like you heard the director in her speech, she did mention the number of male and the female that have been admitted into this system. That is what you enjoy in the open and distance learning environment. And even those in isolation, they equally enjoy from this. I am happy to tell you, even in the National Open University of Nigeria, we have some inmates that have graduated and some are still on course. They will have to come from the PUDA or the IDP camp, there is no restriction. That is the openness when it comes to open learning. Again, inside the open learning, learners are given choices of media. You have choices of media because we recognize in the open and distance learning that learners have different ways of learning. You don't have same or equal learning styles. There are some they are more comfortable when they learn reading. Some are more comfortable when they learn listening. Some are more comfortable when they learn seeing. And all these form of media and support are being provided. And there are some they are more comfortable when somebody talks to them. And that is why you have the facilitation section. Because all these are incorporated to bridge that gap and the mediation. Again, you are at the center point in open and distance learning. You are the one that is recognized at the center point. And therefore, we lay emphasis on the learner center because you are the one that matters. The teacher will just come and give you a guide. Now, what is the distance learning about? As earlier mentioned, the distance learning is basically the geographical separation of the teacher and the learner. However, these have been mediated through technology. Now, what are the activities in learner-centered? I've just mentioned that in open and distance learning, the pedagogy we focused on in the learner center. So what are those things you stand to enjoy as you be at the center of the activity? One, you have the integrity and freedom of the learner is respected. In Esther, we respect your integrity. We respect your freedom. You can ask your questions. You can talk to somebody. If you have anything in a challenge, you can share it and there will be someone there to attend to you. Then again, being a learner-centered approach, activity we're going to give, teaching and learning process provides flexible sequence of study. At the time you get hold of your study materials, you would observe that the study materials are sequenced from simple to complex. They are sequenced in such a way that you will be able to have a self-study. You'll be able to read on your own, understand and support will still be provided. They will have a discourse learning outcome and content. What does that mean in open and distance learning? It means before you come up with the learning outcome for the learners, Esther has gone out to discuss with industrial partners and they have discussed with some students to find out what their needs really are. And based on the needs of the students, based on the needs of the employers and the society, we come up with a structure that when you graduate, your certificate will be useful to you in the area where it is uh, needed. So that you don't need to be moving from here to there looking for how to upgrade your skills because it has been discussed and the focus has been given on what is required for you in your learning outcome. They will have supported learning methods. There are different methods that your facilitators are going to use. 
in the open and distance learning environment, one method is not used. And in this regard of the Excel learning environment, you're going to use your course material, which is one way that is being provided for you. You're going to do some practical activities, hands-on activities, virtual and real-time on site. And again, you're going to meet with your facilitators real-time online through video conferencing. And in that regard, going to use Zoom, somebody will talk about that later. Then again, we're looking at competency-based method of assessment. How are you going to be assessed? We are not just going to give you an examination to just to test your knowledge. No, it is competency-based. We're going to test you based on what you're going to do after your graduation to ensure that when you graduate, you will actually be able to carry out those functions without necessarily going for extra training or hands-on before you can do what you ought to do. Now we have choice of support mechanisms. For the choice of support mechanism, when the director was making her speech, she did mention some of them. You have 24 seven support mechanism that can provide support for you in the administrative sector, technical sector, and in the academics. So I do hope that you're going to explore all this, use them to your advantage, because this is what the learner-centered method entails. You are the one that matters. So how do you succeed as an ODL learner? First, you have to be disciplined. Self-discipline matters a lot. Do not procrastinate. You have to study your material. Don't procrastinate. So I will do it tomorrow. I will do it next tomorrow. And before you know it, the time is up. You may not be able to do that. Yes, we do recognize you are working. You have a lot of activities down there to do. There are some of us, we are housewife, mother. There are some of us, mom, uh, father, and so on. And you have your job also to tackle it. But however, it is through discipline that you can share your time. And that takes out to the time management. How will you manage your time? How are you going to share your time? I would really want to advise to succeed in an ODL environment. It may take up some part of your time for social activities because you need to give in time. At this level, most times, you are alone. Nobody is with you there. So therefore, the self-discipline is what will give you the encouragement, the ginger to carry out and do what you needed to do at a particular time. Now, develop a good study habit or skills. And what are these skills that you need to develop? You have to develop the habit of listening. You have to develop the habit of speaking. Now, why is listening? Somebody might ask. Remember, you're going to be having a discussion with the support staff. If you have a question to ask, and somebody is explaining to you at the other end, maybe it's not textual, it has to be true speech. If you don't have a good listening skill, you might not be able to grab what is required. And the same thing goes when it comes to your facilitation. If you don't have a good listening skill, it could affect the assimilation you might receive in your facilitation. And the same goes with your speaking skills. And with the speaking skills, it helps you to articulate the challenges you want to present to the person that is going to provide help or support for you. So if the speaking skill is not right and the person you are talking to do not understand what you really need, it might not be able to supply you all that is required. Then reading skills and study strategy. While you are studying on your own, the ability of you to jot down what you are reading and make notes out of what you are reading matters a lot. So with this, you need to have your reading and writing uh, strategy and study strategy. Every one of us has different ways we can study and understand. There are some places, even in the marketplace, they can study and they understand. There are others, they really want a quiet environment. There are some, they can study multitask and they still understand, but others, they may not be able to get along with that. Now, we have uh, another an understanding of the various learner support that is provided for you. You need to walk through and understand. Then read your course guide. Do not flip over. Study it, understand it. Every course has a course guide. 
that will give you a direction, follow instruction on your course page. Do your assignment and participate in the facilitation. With this, I wish you an enjoyable study time with Esther. Thank you very much, um, Professor Juliet Inibido. I mean, uh, an instructional design uh, specialist taking us through learning in an ODL institution. Now, to build from that, I know our students too will be wondering what kind of classroom will they be studying or what kind of learning environment uh, will they be exposed to? Now, to supply information that would better your understanding with regards that, uh, let me invite uh, Dr. Adewale Adeshina, who unavoidably is absent, but would be represented by Mr. Miracle to take us on students' learning environment. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, please um, permit me to stand on the existing protocol. Uh, welcome once again uh, to all the students, and uh, I'm sure you have quite a number of questions on how you're going to access all these wonderful things that has been said concerning your learning here at ISTEL. And uh, thankfully, uh, Professor Juliet has done a good uh, explanation of all the theories uh, that uh, is going to be on this slide. I'll just say a few words and then show you your classroom. So basically what I'm here to do is to show you your classroom. So let's quickly get into the slides uh, and see what we can do from there. So from this first slide here, your learning environment. So basically you know that you're going to be using um, your, uh, your, your system or your phone or your tablet uh, to take instruction. So the mode of instruction here primarily uh, is via e-learning. That is, it is conducted online using the internet. So as long as you have your laptops, as long as you have your tablet, as long as you have your mobile devices or your desktop, you can be hooked up uh, to your learning environment. Now, this will give you access. This learning environment gives you access to all your courses anytime, anywhere, and at your own pace. So it doesn't depend, it doesn't matter where you are, uh, your, your geographical location is not really considered in, this, in, such, in, in such instances because you can access these resources anywhere you are and whichever device you have on you, you can use it uh, to access the learning resources that are available on your learning environment. And another very wonderful thing about the, the learning environment is that it combines quite a number of things together to ensure that you enjoy it. So it combines multimedia, and technology to provide uh, an active uh, learning for you. And the beauty of every single, single course that you have in ASTEL, whether you have it uh, under any of the programs, is that they have been designed in such a way that they are interactive, they are energetic and dynamic and appealing. So at no point in time would you be bored while uh, you know, uh, glancing through and taking in the contents that you have in the courses in every uh, program that you have or any of the program that you have registered for. So uh, these activities, what would you be doing on this um, particular learning uh, environment? So it has been divided into two different activities. So you have the synchronous and you have the asynchronous. So basically this is what you'll be doing. So from the synchronous, I'm sure you have heard when Professor Julius was um, um, uh, giving a presentation where you're going to be meeting your uh, facilitator. So in the synchronous activity, that is what you do in real time, you will be attending uh, course lectures at specific time as given by the facilitator or as agreed by you as the student and the facilitator that is taking that course. Now, what that will also give you is the opportunity to communicate, not just with the fa facilitator alone, but as uh, well, well with the fellow students, you know, you can share ideas and you can even message each other uh, while you are on that synchronous uh, setting. And then you also have the advantage, uh, advantage of application sharing and polling. 
Now to the second activity, that the second group of activities that you'll be doing, that's the asynchronous, that's the self-paced activities that you'll be doing on your learning environment. So basically from the name you see is self-paced, and then you will have access to your course resources. Now this is asynchronous because you can do it at any time, at any point in time that you want to access your course resources. And then you have something called discussion forums. Now a topic could be posted by the facilitator and then you post your comments and you also see the comments of others, you know, to learn and gain ideas from what other people have understanding on about that topic. And then you have blogs and you have webcasts. So all these things here have been packaged as the asynchronous. That means it's not real time. It can be done at your own pace. Now, basically, uh, there's going to be something, if you, if, you, if you were listening very well when uh, Professor Julius was making her presentation, you'll find out that she talked about where you will have uh, virtual demonstrations, and then at some points where you will have some on-site uh, activity. Now, this learning environment or what you'll be doing basically in, uh, in ASL is a blended uh, uh, approach uh, method of learning. So you have the e-learning part and then you have the face-to-face. -face. And you can see here we have the online facilitation sessions as we've just talked about where you get to meet your facilitator's life and then you interact with other students. And then you have some high level demonstrations and simulations as well of role plays. All these will be done on the e-learning aspect uh, of um, your learning here. And then you have the face-to-face. -face. Now, this is where, of course, it's not virtual. This is where you get uh, your hands dirty. Uh, you get your hands doing things and this can be get gotten on the internships. And then when you go on study visit, of course, you know that is face-to-face -face as well. And you go on industrial tours. I'm sure you heard that when uh, the director of the center was presenting, uh, talked about the study visits and uh, industrial tours. And then we have the Estel Research Village, which is still under works. And I'm very, very sure that as uh, as soon as it is done, you will have a clear understanding about what the Estel Research Village is. So the question, are you ready? You can take your courses anywhere in the world so long as you have one, your co computer, your laptop or your tablet, your smart mobile device, a strong internet connection, then you have access to audio and video conferencing software like Zoom. Now, basically you will be making use of the uh, Zoom platform just as we ha have here to take your lecture. So you need to have all these to answer the question, are you ready? Now, you also need to be focused, I'm sure you can see uh, from the presentation of Professor Juliet, where she talked about the things that you need to do. You have to be focused as a student. Uh, that's part of what you will use to know if you're ready. And then you have to be pro proactive, self-disciplined, and well-organized. Of course, you know that there will be nobody there to push you to the onus is in you to take your, uh, your studies uh, very seriously. Now, let's go to the practical aspect of this presentation. Now, let, I want to take you to your class. I'll take you around, just do a few things, uh, uh, what you're expected to see on your platform. So to access your platform, I, I want to believe the platform is um, uh, being displayed at the moment. So the site to get there, of course, all these informations will be provided to you, but just to give you a quick rundown of your learning environment. So the site is elearn.nouedu2.net. This is the learning management system of the National Open University of Nigeria. So this is where your class is. This is where you ha have access to both the synchronous and the asynchronous part of your learning. So once you are here, all you just need to do, all you just need to do is to log in. So once you click on log in, Uh, I want to be sure that I'm audible. Someone said he can't hear. I believe I am. Okay. You are audible. All right. Thank you so much, sir. All right. Uh, so once you come here, you will be prompted to put in your username and your password. So these details will be provided to you if it, is, if it, if it has not been done already. So you will have your uh, username and your password with your matric number and whatever details that you're giving. So once you do that, you click on login. Now, once you click on login, you'll be presented with your class. So this is your class. And then all the courses that you are registered for will appear here in the course overview. Now, of course, there could be some uh, 
um, courses that you may have not registered for, but I believe that all the courses that you are registered for under your program will be present here. So you just come here, you take the courses that you registered for uh, on uh, under your program. So you can see here, you have the dashboard, you have the site home, you have the calendar. And then once you click on this, my courses, it drops down and shows you all your courses, just in case you don't see banners like this showing you everything. So let's enter one of the courses. You can also see here, you have something like a meter. So this is uh, what helps you to know how far you have gone uh, in your learning. So let's, let's get into one of the classes. So this is um, MIS 802 for those who are uh, under the MIS program. You'll find out that if you register for this course, this is how your, 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 your classroom will look like. And you have a number of other uh, buttons here that you can interact with. And you have your forum, you have to meet your facilitator, you get to know who is going to be facilitating that course. And then you have your chat where you chat with your colleagues and your facilitator. You have introductory video on every single course. And then this online facilitation you have here, click here to join. This is where you will be clicking to join the live facilitation where you get to meet your facilitator and then also interact with other students. Then you have the course material section. Now the course materials is in two uh, phases. You have the PDF and then you have this comp material that, uh, that has quite a number of things uh, infused in them you have the vi you have your videos you have you have um, your pictures you have graphical representation of whatever it is that is being taught there you have it there it's a very rich package and you are encouraged to go online and get uh, uh, get access to this um, course material so you have it in two formats you have this that will open either on your tablet or on your phone or your uh, laptop devices same also for the course materials. Now for the assignment, mini projects and the portfolio, your facilitator will be intimating you on how you'll be making use of this. Now the discussion forum, if you remember, we talked about discussion forum. This is where you get to post your ideas about the topic that has been posted by the facilitator of that course. And then of course, your feedback is very important. At the end of the course, you will give us a feedback to let us know how, or you let your facilitator know how they can serve you better. So uh, I believe with these, uh, of course, other information concerning your learning platform, of course, will be made available to you in due course. Uh, so let's quickly go back to our slide. Uh, we are done with a short tour of the learning environment. Uh, uh, with this, you have a better understanding of how you will be having your learning here at ASTEL. So with this, thank you so much for listening. Uh, enjoy your stay in Estelle, thank you. Mr. Miracle, thank you very much for that uh, brief excursion through what uh, students' learning environment entails or looks like. From that, we might straight to the students knowing how their results verification, project supervision, an internship will look like. In doing that, permit me to invite Dr. Johnson Opatae, the coordinator of monitoring and evaluation of STL, to take us on that journey. The vice chancellor and other principal officers of the university my director, Estelle, the team in the Estelle project, our esteemed guests in this particular program, and the students. I say good day to you, and I hope you are enjoying the program. Mine is very, very simple. I just want to take you through some of the things that you need to know about the verification mechanisms of the project, about your project supervision, and also the undertaking of your um, internship. As you have been told by the director, 
eighth impact project is has come on board to build on the success of the first ACE project in African region. And the ACE impact was launched in February 2019 in Djibouti by the World Bank. And ACE is one of the ACE impact projects that I'm approved for this particular nation, Nigeria. And since this particular project is World Bank assisted project, it is under the monitoring eyes and watching eyes of the National University Commissions, also Association of African Universities, AAU, and of course, the World Bank. The fund that has been promised to be given to this project cannot just be collected on a platter of gold. It is actually based on results. And that reason why the World Bank has given the project some disbursement link results, which are based on the indicators that every component of the project needs to achieve before the money can be released onto the project. But this money comes using various parameters that are called DLIs. That is the Bosman Link Indicators. But the first one that relates to you as our students are what they call DLR 3.1 to 3.4. And for us, Estel, that is one of the S impacts approved and we are being operation to admit students. We have our masters, we have our PhD students, and of course, we have the professional short courses. So you need to know that as PhD students, we want to take your enrollment and enlist it in DLR 3.1. For the master students, we take your enrollment and enlist it in DLR 3.2. Why DLR 3.3 is for the professional short courses participant enrollment. So immediately you are enrolled and you are reg fully registered, you become a Bonneville student. Therefore, your details will be sent to the regional facilitation unit, the RFU in the region by the Association of African Universities based in Ghana for verification. So, and this particular regional body alone cannot do the verification by themselves. They will send it to an accredited international and external evaluator that we actually check whether you are really a registered student in African Center of Excellence on Technology Enhanced Learning. And the accredited body is this particular called Technopolis. So they link with World Bank and they give the World Bank the results of your registration with us. Then how do they carry out these verifications? They can call you at any time as our students. They can also send you mails on your email addresses. They will also send you an online survey, which you must respond to within three weeks. So for you to be able to justify your staying with us in this particular study of your choice, you must be ready to link up with all these particular verificators and evaluators that we need your details. So what is the implication of this for you as students? Number one, it means that you need your full name and you must be consistent with the name that you are using to register for your program. We need your surname, 
we need your middle name. We also need your last name. Also, we need active telephone numbers. So at the point of registration, give us at least two telephone numbers that are authentic, not the one that they will call you, they will not be able to get in touch with you. Also, we need your working and activated email address because the survey that we sent on to you will be sent to your email. And if you don't receive it, you will not be able to partake it in the survey. And when you don't partake in the survey, it means that you are not actually part of us. Then you must know your center. Your center is Africa's Center of Excellence on Technology Enhanced Learning, National Open University of Nigeria. Then your institution is National Open University of Nigeria. Of course, your gender is very, very important. You cannot be a male at the same time be a female. Also, your nationality is very, very important. So when they ask you from which country, what is your nationality? If you are a Cameroonian, don't say you are Nigerian. Immediately they ask you in the first time and you say, I am a Nigerian, then you have forfeited the game. Then you, your academic program, don't miss it together. If you are for MSc uh, Management Information System, say, I am, I register for MSc Management Information System. Also, your year of enrollment is 2001. So you need to take note of that year. Your month of enrollment, you also need to take note of that. And that is July. And if for those of us that are registering in August, the center will come out to regulate this one for you. Also, your expected year of graduation is very, very important. So for those that are master's students, you know you are expected to be with us for three semesters. And for those of us for PhD students, you are going to be with us for six semesters. That is almost three full years. So you should be able to calculate if you are here with us now, it means that for master student, by the end of 2022, you must be rounding up your program. So when your result comes out, it, it may be that your result is really canceled by not giving the right full information, or your result is queried, or as well, your result may actually be checked and marked as being okay to proceed in the program. Also, you need to know that you are going to undertake research uh, projects. And research is the pivot of all academic activity, especially at the postgraduate level. So as soon as you complete your registration, I'm telling you, you'll be assigned to your project and research supervisor and your project activities commences immediately. So we are not wasting time here. Why the study under ACE projects is unique is this. There is a paradigm choose, especially for postgraduate students, in which we are following old and traditional you know, way of supervision. We are some PhD students are spending 10 years, 7 years, 8 years, instead of 3 years. But this, they said, no, we want to be excellent a project in which if you are here for 3 years, you are going to graduate in 3 years. All things being equal. Doing your own part and the supervisor doing his or our own part. So, in your research project, some things are actually very pertinent for you. Number one, your project work must solve a specific problem. You are into ICT and IT and all the areas of computer-related programs. Therefore, in your chosen field, let your research problem focus on that particular area. And it must be impactful. It's not just a tradition of just coming out attitude of student, you know, towards MIS. And you just go and administer a questionnaire to find out the attitude. It must be impactful. 
it must cause a change. Also, it must be achievable within the time of your coursework as master's or PhD. Also, your research project must be in the field of your study and you must be ready to publish in reputable international journals. We have our research coordinator here who will be monitoring what you are doing also. That in your research work, you must be ready to publish, not until you finish your project. You must be ready to do it, and even during the course of your project, be ready to write papers, and the center will be able to sponsor you. So what our expectations are is this. Liaise with your supervisor, agree with your supervisor, set agenda for your, with your supervisor, and this agenda will be submitted to the center for monitoring. I, as the ME, will be monitoring whatever thing that you are doing. And intermittently, I'll be setting you evaluation progress uh, for which you are going to fill, and your supervisor will also be filling it. Develop a framework for your work. Take advantage of all the resources and the center to gather material for the project and also liaise with your industrial and professional partners during your project writing. For the internship, you need hands-on. You need to get experience. And because of this, in gathering your experience, it is compulsory that you undergo one to three months internship during the course of your study. This particular three months may be in phases, or it may be at once at a go. Participate in them. What do we need for your internship? We need your full name. We need, you need to know your center. We need your gender. We need your intern telephone numbers. We need your email address. We need your academic year of internship. When you are undertaking the internship, we need your academic program, the start date and the finish date. You need the certificates you are giving. Also, the host organization where the internship is undertaken. Then, the name of your whole supervisor. Then your law book must be com completed and also signed. And if there is any photograph of all that you have done within the course of the internship, you will let us know at the center. Therefore, there is a circle for monitoring and evaluation. Why are we monitoring your work entirely? We monitor, we evaluate, and we report. So as for you to have improvement in the course of your study. So as you are here, all eyes are on you. We are watching you. The center is watching you. The university is watching you. Even the ACE Impact Project Coordinator is watching you. Also, the, at the sub-region level, AAU is watching you. And of course, the financier, which is the World Bank, is also watching you. Therefore, you need to be abreast of all this particular information I know that you are a unique student, not just an ordinary student at this particular center. I wish you the best in your academic endeavor. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Johnson of Batai. As the day uh, rolls by, you will understand better what uh, Johnson Okbatai is trying to put across to you. And I hope that won't be of any difficulty. In continuation of our explanation to you with regards to learning in an open and distance environment, let me at this very juncture invite uh, the coordinator of artificial intelligence, uh, Dr. Gregory Nwodi to take us on a brief of what AI is all about with regards to Estelle. Sir. Thank you very much, my able moderator. Thank you so much. Uh, my director, Professor Jatan, it's a pleasure to be here. Uh, let me stand on the already established protocol, please. 
Well, like uh, the moderator has said, my name is Dr. Greg Onwadi, and I'm the program coordinator for AI, artificial intelligence. The AI program in Estel uh, is offered in two streams. One is the MSc program, and of course the PhD program. Now I'll take us to the uh, requirement for graduation before I just do a short brief on the the AI program. Just two minutes. Now, uh, as students. Our highly esteemed students, you are expected to be here with us for the MSc program. You're expected to be with us for a minimum duration of three semesters and a maximum of six semesters. And of course, um, your graduation requirements, you're expected to have a minimum of 45 credit units to graduate. I won't bore with the details now when we have the uh, program for the, uh, within the week for AI students, I will roll out the details. But the students for the MSc program must present two seminars before the final defense. The students are also expected to publish at least one paper in a acceptable peer reviewed conference proceedings or journal. And of course, the minimum CGPA to proceed to the dissertation is 3.0. And also, uh, you need 3.0 CGPA to graduate. Then for the PhD program, the duration is six semesters at the minimum, then maximum of 12 semesters. Then of course, the students must earn a minimum of 30 credit units, including thesis. The student must also present three seminars before the final defense. The student is expected to publish at least two papers in reputable peer-reviewed conference uh, proceedings. This award is uh, expected for MSc and PhD students uh, in order to graduate. Now, like our uh, M and E coordinator has said. You are also expected to go through an internship program. And the internship program runs from a minimum of one to three months. So you're expected to go through that internship program to further prune your skills in the area of artificial intelligence. Now, having said that, I'll just run you through a brief on what AI is. AI, simply put, is making machines to think or behave like humans. And as you know today, AI is in the, the trend, is a trending thing when it comes to ICT field. I won't bore you with the various types of AI, but I'll look at a small report that I picked from the net, which may interest you and further fuel your interest as you pursue this, your field of study in AI. Jobs in AI, this, uh, the reference is from migratelearning.com. Jobs in AI have been steadily increasing over the past few years and will continue to grow at an accelerating rate. On average, there has been a 60 to 70 percent hike in salaries of aspirants who are successfully transitioned into the AI role. As per research, the demand for AI jobs have increased, but the efficient workforce has not been keeping pace with it. Efficient workforce have not been keeping pace with the demand of uh, AI. Then again, further, we see 133 million jobs will be created in AI by the year 2020. We're already in 2021, so we're expecting that that should have increased. So having said that, you see that AI is a field that uh, is really trending. And of course, the core uh, subject areas, whether it's on machine learning, 
robotics, natural language processing, uh, data sciences, and of course, programming languages like Python and then uh, Java. Well, like I said earlier on, we'll delve into more details when we come within the week and we are talking more about AI. Of course, uh, in the field, you have uh, machine learning engineers, you have data scientists, business intelligence developers, and research uh, scientists. These are the core job uh, areas uh, that uh, AI experts can fit into. Then, of course, some people will begin to wonder why what is so much fuse and interest about AI. You want to know, know a little bit about the advantages of deploying AI in the society. First, it helps to reduce uh, human errors. It enables us to have access to systems 24 seven. It helps us in repetitive, repetitive tasks or works. Like you see robots being used in hospitals to serve medicine to patients, to attend to routine tasks that are done in the hospital. Digital assistance, like you have um, chatbots on the net. You go to a particular website, you see a chatbot that will pop up asking for, uh, to offer assistance. Faster decisions, and of course, uh, rational decision makers. Then, like I said earlier on, to medical applications and improve security and, of course, efficient uh, communication. These are just a few of the benefits or advantages of using AI in our society. There's so much more to talk about AI, but like I said, we'll still have time to spend with our AI students within a week. Once again, I'll like to welcome you, our STEAM students, and I sincerely hope and pray that you give your studies the needed attention and focus it demands. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Greg Moody. Uh, may I very expressly at this uh, moment invite also for a brief on cybersecurity, Dr. Vivian Wocha. Once again, a very warm welcome. Can you hear me? A very warm welcome to all uh, 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 candidates, our uh, students, uh, for the virtual orient the virtual orientation program. Uh, I want to stand on the existing protocol and congratulate the director, Estel, and the vice chancellor of National Open University of Nigeria uh, for the second virtual graduation. Uh, virtual orientation, sorry. So um, I am Dr. Vivian Wacha. I'll be coordinating your program for cybersecurity. The MSc and the PhD programs uh, offered at ASTEL uh, are specially designed to equip all our students, both, I mean, because we have students both here in Nigeria and in the Gambias, Gambia, as the director had said, Cameroon, uh, Chad, I, I mean, she didn't say it, but we have students all over. So it's specially designed to equip all our students with the required knowledge and skills to be able to protect uh, the digital information that we have. Because um, it's important to note here that with the digital transformation, there has been a rising uh, cyber increase in the cyber crime rates. I mean, needless to say that most of the things that we have now are now digital. Every sector of our society is digital. It has been digitalized. We have data. So we have data, huge data, that needs to be protected. So no wonder the need for cybersecurity. There's been a, a lot of increase. And if you check the details on the, the data, on the net, and, you know, even physically, you will realize that there's need for cybersecurity experts. And actually, they are more, uh, if you check also, uh, 
in, in the States, in the Ameri America, uh, they are one of the best paid cybersecurity experts. So um, essentially, the program in ASTEL is not just going to be theoretical because we're going to have hands-on exposure. Our students are going to uh, have the opportunity of um, having some hands-on experience thanks to the collaboration we have with the industry. We have collaboration with IBM, Oracle, uh, Cisco. So currently we're having trainings and exposures. We saw so the virtual laboratories that we have with this industry will expose our students with the skills that is required to, to protect data from accidental loss. So you'd also have the opportunity of interacting with uh, brilliant professors. Uh, you will have the opportunity of interacting with brilliant professors from all over the world, in fact, because we have a rich, uh, a plethora of academia from Nigeria, West Africa, South Africa, uh, the UK, America, all over. So in fact, it's, it's, a, it's, a brilliant, it's a wonderful opportunity that we have. And we also have the opportunity of having the industrial experts because in ASTEL as a policy, we don't just have the academia because we realize that there's need because we, we're looking at technology enhanced learning. So we're not just learning, we want to ensure that we are applying what we, what we are learning to, to what the principles, the theoretical principles. So I'll really uh, uh, invite all the uh, students, both in MSc and PhD cybersecurity, to explore all the opportunities that we have. And the process for all our students are, I mean, there are, there are, there are so many, but I'll just mention a few. So we, we, at the end of the exposure to the programs that we have, uh, and also after being exposed, because we're going to have internships and uh, learning visits, and thanks to the collaboration that we're having, there will be lots of exposure for our students and opportunities to also attend conferences. So I will really um, encourage all of us to explore this opportunity because ASTEL is, is geared towards you know, promoting uh, research that will solve real life problems. So if we're able to come up with very, very uh, valid and relevant uh, research, ASTEL will be there to support because the program is already designed in that sphere. So the prospects, I'll just mention a few. We're going to become uh, uh, cybersecurity uh, ethical hackers. Of course, hack hacking is, is, is not okay, but when it's ethical, you're doing it for analysis. You're, you're doing it to, to ensure that the system is, is, is uh, prepared for attack. So we're also going to have digital forensics experts. We're going to be having penetration testers. We're going to be having uh, security uh, administrators, network security administrators, and a whole lot. So I really want us to be prepared because we're going to have lots of exposure in our program. Um, well, for details, we're going to be having an interactive session on Tuesday, on Wednesday, sorry on Wednesday, 11 to 1. So I'll invite all the students to be prepared for this program because it's going to be very, very well loaded with lots of ideas and initiatives. So thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Dr. Mocha. May I also invite in that light, Dr. Juliana Ndunagu, the coordinator of MIS for a brief. Good day all. All protocol observed. I'm Dr. Julian Andunagu, the Management Information System Program Coordinator. Management Information System, that's MIS, is focused on the application of IT on business activities or operations. Students of management information system are exposed to computing courses and management courses. MIS graduates are on high demand. Programs serve as a double honor. What do I mean? 
a student or graduate of management information system that wants to develop a software in computing, in accounting, he will not need, he or she will not need to interact with management um, students to have a functional software. But a student of, of information technology will need to interact with management um, students or graduates or experts to be able to develop a functional um, software in accounting. Management information system graduates are, known, are also known as manage, a data management specialists since they would have known the skill to collect data, process data, and disseminate it for effective decision making. Many big firms like Amazon cannot do without management information system graduates because they are known to have the skill on how to fetch our decisions for future forecasting and is of the firm. Thank you, Esther. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Juliana Ndinagu, uh, Program Coordinator for Management Information System. Now, to have a good overview of what uh, the administrative unit, unit of ESTEL is all about, may I at this moment invite the admin team lead of ESTEL, Deputy Registrar Udochu Chidi Uwanko, to take us on that. Good morning, all. Uh, good afternoon, all, and uh, welcome to Estel. Uh, wonderful, newly admitted students. The uniqueness of uh, sorry, I stand on the existing protocol already established. The uniqueness of uh, now Estel as a center of excellence guides the operation of the administrative unit. Uh, the center like you know is uh, a center of excellence established by the world bank in association with uh, the association of africa universities and the national universities commission all the lofty ideals of ASTEL and national Open university and all the full 21st century programs you've uh, had enunciated by the program coordinators uh, are carried on by the admin unit i have met several students with my team, via emails, uh, WhatsApp messages, text messages and telephone calls. We have sent uh, welcome messages to you. We have sent your admission letters and login details to STL platform. Uh, we have sent various notification and general correspondence to you. And for the students who are already uh, doing their second semester in STL, the, we have acted as a linkage between you and your facilitators, your supervisors, your place of internship, and so on and so forth. Uh, we have also uh, uh, established the digitized the student record format for ASTEL, such that at the click of the finger via the email, we can get across to all the documents you submitted during your time of application. A lot of students had had information for uh, 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 when they were applying for the scholarships, uh, the admin had sent lots of responses uh, to you. We act as a help desk. Uh, we have also sent provision roster. We have also sent uh, internship e log books to students that we have already. And we intend to continue in this regard in ensuring that every single information that you require to have a wonderful study experience in Estel that will provide it for you. Uh, we also work uh, in tandem with the M&E, the Monitoring and Evaluation Officer, to ensure that verification of a certificate and verification of uh, other things that you expected to do as MSc and PhD students are carried out. Our email response desk, our WhatsApp response desk, our Twitter is manned by the admin unit in collaboration with the ICT unit, Directorate and Learning Content Management System. Uh, Estelle has a very broad organogram, which includes uh, the research team, the academic coordinator, the 
finance. A lot of you have contacted us regarding payments made that maybe was not reflected, and we have urgently treated these issues for you. So we intend to keep on you know, carrying on uh, our work. Uh, we also intend to set up a WhatsApp platform for each program so that you have interaction with fellow students and uh, facilitators. We already have about uh, six of them for students who are already uh, in second semester in ASTEL. Uh, so we have some interactions take place. We also disseminate uh, information regarding academic calendar and so on and so forth. A lot of our students are on internship programs now scattered across the country and even outside the country. Some are in Uganda, some are in Ghana, and so on and so forth. The information emanating from the administrative units help the students to uh, excel in what they are doing. Just about last week, we had visitors from outside the country. The admin unit played an important role in helping in travel advisory, hotel accommodation, and so on and so forth. So we intend to also keep on doing this. By Friday this week, we'll have an hour-long interaction with our students, regional students especially, the newly admitted ones, so that we'll give you any information you wish to know regarding the administrative unit of ASTEL. I, I wish to thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Chidi Wanko. Uh, may I at this very moment also invite to take us on this cruise, the academic calendar examination and assessment. Let me have the honor of inviting Estelle Research Coordinator, Professor Christine Ofulwe. The Vice Chancellor of um, National Queen University of Nigeria, the President Lawel Queen University, the Deputy Vice Chancellor Academic University of the Gambia, Deputy Vice Chancellors Noun, Deans and Directors, the Director Estel, Estel Faculty and Team, students from the West African sub region, ladies and gentlemen, welcome again. My assignment this morning is to take us through briefly the academic calendar um, assessment and examination at ISTO. Can we have the next slide, please? So, um, as with every um, academic program, um, there are assessment activities that. Um, Will be, will be expected our students to um, participate in. Um, and um, these activities are spread throughout the duration of your course and the duration of your stay. Um, the assessment activities are of various types. Um, we have what we call the self-assessment. Um, these you will find in your course content as you um, study. And um, you, uh, it's actually to help you to check your progress, to check your comprehension, learning materials. There you also have summative um, assessment activities and um, what you call the formative um, assessment activities. Um, the, I've put some examples there, in-text questions that you will find as you study the material, and um, self-assessment questions are to help you um, ensure that you, are comp that you comprehend the material. And then you have discussion forums, um, which um, you can access through your um, course um, page, and um, you have your facilitators asking, um, posting topics that will enable you to interact um, with your peers and colleagues um, during the course of your study. You will also have assignments and um, um, mentioned internship as the main and virtual presentation of projects. These are the ones that make up your um, formative 
uh, uh, assessment activities. And then at the end, you will have your final examination. Um, the mode, as you've, um, you've met these two words before, will be both in real time and also um, those that you can do at your own um, pace. Can we have the next slide? So now this is the assessment template. As you can see, there are about four types there um, for uh, that cuts across all the six programs. And so it is important that you um, understand um, when these are due. Um, your facilitators will help you to know that. Um, and we'll bring that to your attention. Um, you would have the aspect, this is the way that the, um, your scores are going to be aggregated. Um, the theory part, um, practical hands-on. Um, has a, a, a score, and then you have the test, um, which could be also in form of assignments, and then you have the final exam. And you will see that by the time you add all this up, um, it comes to the 100%. Let me just um, pause to say, to highlight and underscore the importance of discussion forums and self-assessment um, questions that run through your course. Um, it's important because like I said, um, these are in the building blocks that enable you to um, ensure that you, um, you, uh, you, un you understand. And even if you do not understand, then you put out questions that can come up during your, you can ask your facilitators during the um, course of, your, of um, the uh, facilitation periods that you'll be exposed to. Um, now, the final slide is the academic calendar. So this is also a guide to help you to be able to plan your studies. Um, right now, we are um, in the last week of August, and you're having this orientation. And incidentally, as according to the calendar, tomorrow, facilitation starts. So it begins right away. Again, let me underscore the importance of you being able to uh, participate in the facilitation. Um, all of these have been put together to um, ensure that um, you acquire the um, requisite knowledge and the demonstrable skills that um, go along with your course of study. Um, you would also notice that in September you have you know, your first assignment, the second assignment, third assignment, and then the facilitation um, and assignments end in October. And then internship comes up right away. And um, then as you prepare, and um, following after that, you prepare for your exams. Um, it's a, a pretty tight um, spaced um, course of study but with a lot, with careful planning um, of your time, like you heard at the beginning, and um, having set a timetable for yourself, I believe that um, you will be able to cope. So with that, I would like to thank you for listening, and I wish you all the best in your programs. Thank you. Thank you, Ma. And that brings us to the end of uh, the various presentation. And I'm hoping by now our students must have been getting a clearer portrait of what the learning environment and what is expected of them uh, is becoming clearer by, by, the, by the minute and second. And that brings us to questions, observations, and of course, answers will be supplied. Uh, Miracle, I will leave that to you now to check from our students who are online and fellow participants joining us online who want to ask questions or reservations on some of the things presented today. And the officers responsible will come forward for explanation and shed, shedding more light on that.
So uh, those online, any with any observation or question, uh, should please raise your electronic hand or indicate by raising your hand where you are and the opportunity will be given to you to ask whatever you want to ask. The officer responsible will attend to just that. Okay, Professor Rashid, the floor is yours. Uh, Professor Rashid, if you can hear us, please unmute yourself and go ahead to ask your question. Okay, your okay thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon, the director of the center and uh, all the resource persons. I think it is uh, an opportunity to be in your midst this afternoon. Uh, I also want to congratulate the newly admitted postgraduate students. Uh, just a brief one. I think uh, the center can, since these students are coming newly, I think uh, it's desirable that uh, you facilitate a meeting with the supervisors, both the academia and the industry, before the taking of the research. So that uh, what that meeting, the advisory from that meeting will also guide their thoughts in going about the research. Because uh, bringing the two on board have been issue, like I normally say, will assist the students so that there is no even conflict in terms of the industrial contribution and theoretical contribution. We can create a synergy have been issued. And I, it will be good if the center can enforce this, that uh, such meeting come up as soon as possible. All right, uh, Professor, if you are clear on that, and the center director, uh, Professor Grace Joktan, will respond to that shortly. Uh, any other question, observation? Do we have any? So that we are the industry person attend that they calling for this new set of students. Thank you. Okay. Uh, in the absence of any for now, may I invite the center director to respond to that? Yeah, uh, Professor Rashid, I'm glad to hear from you. Uh, thank you for joining us from last week. This is uh, one of the University of Illinois. Okay, there is also a Rashid from Lasso. Okay, thank you, Prof. And your observation is well noted. Uh, we have always created a forum where students meet with uh, supervisors as well as the industrial partners. We have also uh, sent memos to the industrial partners to also forward to us areas of challenge where the center can also work towards. So thank you for that observation and we'll take note of that going forward. Thank you. Uh, still in the spirit of uh, questions, observations, and answers will be supplied a chance uh, to our newly admitted students to raise any observation or ask questions. Who do we have there? Okay. Uh, this was, Please, resource persons, sorry. Thanks for the presentation. I've really been enlightened. Okay, really be enlightened on the various steps to take. I tried logging to my learning content management portal, but I wasn't successful. Then this one says, uh, please, resource persons, may I know if there will be laptops distribution to students? <laughs> well, uh, good afternoon. I am Amadou Dabo from the Gambia. My question is, if a course is mistakenly registered by a student, how can he or she unregister it? Does it? Okay, Look, can we start from the last one? Um, okay, if, a, if a course is mistakenly registered, uh, I think, okay. 
respond to that if a cost is mistaken. Okay, so, so please, if you have any issues concerning your, uh, your platform, concerning your courses or logging in, you can always send an email to istel at noun.edu.ng. It will be forwarded and then we'll try to resolve it within 24 hours. So the email is on the chat box. Uh, you can get it from there. Okay. Uh we are still on the questions. Uh, which one is this? Okay. This one from Abdurrahman. It says, the, in, uh, the internship, is it outside Africa or your professor will suggest? Okay. Okay. Uh, I think let me take it from uh, the student asking uh, laptop for students. Uh, yes, Estelle has a scholarship policy, and I will advise that you go to the website and uh, apply for the scholarship. Should you be qualified for a full scholarship, it embraces that and more. And should you be qualified for a partial scholarship, we will inform you specifically of what the uh, partial scholarship entails. You'll check the scholarship form on the website and ensure you apply. And on the uh, internship, uh, the internship uh, will be determined partly by the center. We already have a list of firms and organizations that have been approved for scholarship in country. And so those will apply in country. For those of you that are outside of the country, we will make arrangements with uh, the DEX office there to be able to ensure that your internship is within your reach and where you will not stress to attend. Um, I think, do we have any other question? Which one? Okay, for the login details, please, we have sent login details, but if you have any problem with your login details, can you please write to Estelle mail as indicated and we'll cross check and get back. Hmm? Which one? How many courses? Okay. MIS. How many courses first semester? Madam Dunagu. Okay. Please, uh, if you check the program we sent, there is a discussion forum for each of the programs on the days indicated and the time. Can you please uh, attend to that? And the program coordinators will specifically uh, respond to your questions. But you can also check the website. It's on, in the handbook that is on the website. It's clearly indicated the compulsory courses those that are electives and the options that you have. The timetable will also be forwarded to you by the close of work today. You will be able to get the facilitation timetable so that you, you, you will be able to know uh, the days and times as well as schedule of the courses that will be facilitated. Okay. Yes, it does, because I think the timing is normally towards the end of the close of work. Am I correct? I think from four. Yes. So the timetable starts from four, so it allows you to conclude on your work. And again, uh, I think Saturdays are inclusive. Uh -huh. Saturdays are inclusive. I think... Okay, I sincerely apologize for that. If you have lodged a complaint and you have not gotten, can you kindly uh, resend and also copy me on my email that will just be placed there for you, please? Hmm? 
that the, the scholarship form is actually on the website. It's not a Google form. The Google form you have is a survey, I think, on your course feedback and so on. So there are two different things. If it's for scholarship, can you please go to the website? At, uh, are you uh, MIS for the first batch or the second batch? For those that are in the second batch, we have not yet done that. You need to conclude on your registration for us to be able to do that. For those that are in the first batch, if you have an issue, can you please let us know? No, you are not, because we are aware that issues of transcript take some time uh, to resolve. So you are still on. We will still be waiting for the next one month. It will still be open for us to get your transcript. Okay, we will send the recording to all of you, all the students. Is that? Okay, he's, he said it's the March 2021. Okay, that means in the first set. Okay, we'll check what the, the challenge is, why you have not gotten that, because you are supposed to have, in fact, you are supposed to have commenced some research activity. So we'll get back to our records and see. Mm, his name is there. Mm. Uh, that's a Nigerian, yes. Okay. All right, any other one? We will get back to you. Once we receive the applications, we are going to process it at the center. And based on the criteria we have for full or partial, we'll get back to you on which one you qualify for. You will be hearing from us on this scholarship in the next one week. Yes, we have said so. You will get it. You will get the recordings. Okay, thank you. Uh, I think by now the the portrait is clearer and just in case you miss anything or you want any further explanation uh, like the director said on thursday there will be an interactive session with from tomorrow okay effective tomorrow ai and mis and cyber securities well the details will be sent to you and you should endeavor to log in at the appropriate date and time uh, goodwill messages now we want to take some goodwill messages um director you want to coordinate this aspect uh, uh, is uh, please can you check is professor gosti alabi from lawe open university is she still on hello prof okay maybe she she, she has gone Okay, the DVC, the Un University of the Gambia, are you still there? Perry, Perry Gomez. All right, so I, I think uh, they are no longer on. No. All right, thank you, Director. Uh, if you can hear us, uh, we are ready for you, for your vote of thanks. The Dean Postgraduate Schools of the National Open University of Nigeria, Professor Samayla Mandi. Could you please unmute yourself and go on, please? Uh, thank you very much, uh, the MC. Uh, let me specifically thank our uh, Vice Chancellor for giving the support for this event. And um, to also say that. 
the Center for African Center for Learning and Technology Enhanced Learning, and I must say that uh, Professor Grace Jogtan and the ABLE team that are there, this is indeed another milestone, is another achievement. The center started with the first batch, and now we're now having the second batch. The student, wherever you are, in Africa and anywhere, I want to congratulate you for this honor because it is not easy for you to be selected. For you to be a student of Easter, remember that you are an ambassador of your country because the Easter program is a World Bank program. It is not a country program, but rather a World Bank program. So meaning that the metrics of selection to be in this program is what you've qualified and you've merited, and that is why you are here. You are a global student, and as a global student, you are, we have to give, give you global treatment. I know that the ASL is able and capable to meet up with all the requirements of what this program is uh, desired to. And you can even see from the caliber of the staff that even did the presentation during the orientation program. I want to tell you students, wherever you are, that we are going to give you a well-organized, well-packaged program in such a way that you consider yourself as an excellent product and an ambassador of your country. On this, the ASL staff, the ASL the deputy directors, the, the, the MIS coordinators, as well as all the various sub-elements in this program, this is a task before all of us. And so we have to prove our metal. And for us to do this, because these students are people from various uh, African countries, what we are noted for, which is about excellent service delivery, which is about excellent and distinctive you know, presentation, the world today is the world of ICT. There is nothing like talking about no, no, no for it again. And I'm happy with the presentation by... Um, Professor Juliet Inebedion, that she talked about the various dimensions of uh, open and distance learning. And so it is clear for all of us to see today. Professor Grace Jogtan, this outing is an excellent one. All of you that have come out to make your presentation, particularly the one that has to do with, um, you know, uh, academic calendar. Now you now see the various, uh, what you are going to do. The examination, the assessment, the continuous assessment, and the various tests. It is clear for each and every one of you to see what you can do. Team working, team spirit, working together, and excellent learning support management, which I can see ably you know, coordinated by uh, Chidi, the uh, deputy registrar of the center. I had his presentation in that aspect. Students, feel free to ask questions. The ASTEL is a 247 center that is ever ready to respond to your own demands. Why I have to come in here is that the program that you are running is a postgraduate program. And being the dean of the School of Postgraduate Studies, that is the, the more reason why I'm here to give you this vote of thanks and to see yourself. For the Ghanaians that are here, I tell you, Akwaba. And then to the Ghanaians that are here, I create my own language of telling you, hey, 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 you are welcome. And other people that are also in other countries that are here, I tell you, it's a great journey. It's an interesting one. And so high level of comparison is what you will see. Just measure yourself that you are not an in-country student the way students in your country are. Compare yourself with MIT students and have our students that are running any of this program. Because the scholars that we have here are well-trained and globalized people. I want to thank the members of staff, thank uh, the, 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 the organizers here, the DSCMS, that is a strategic engine team, the backbone for digital education in Nigeria, and not even and, uh, Nigeria, even in, in West Africa, because we've already showcased what we are doing. 
Professor Folue, that presentation was an outstanding one. And I want to thank you immensely, Dr. Uh, Greg, I mean, uh, Dr. Greg, as well as um, Dr. Vivian, and then uh, Dr. Indenagu. You've done marvelously well. And so what we are to do, we are to showcase some of the things we just did already. And then our massive ceremony, um, um, uh, Bola Ambrose, excellent management of events. And I want to thank you for that. And from my own angle and the School of Postgraduate Studies, whatever requirement and whatever support that is desired that we are, we are asked to do, 247, we're ever ready to give. To the students, congratulations once again. Congratulations. Don't see yourself as a local student, but rather global students that are with the African Center of Learning, uh, Center, African Center of Technology Enhanced Learning, which is domiciled in the National Open University of Nigeria. Thank you very much. And Ebly, you know, directed by Professor Grace Joktan. Thank you and bye for now. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, little wonder that the such encomiums coming from a Professor of Marketing, uh, Professor Samayla Mandi. Thank you very much. And that brings us to the end of our business here for the second virtual orientation exercise. Uh, organized by the African Center of Excellence on Technology Enhanced Learning for the second set of its postgraduate students, uh, masters and PhD. And at this very moment, may I request that we, uh, oh, before we stand for the NOUN anthem, may I just bring to your notice that uh, day two, which is tomorrow, uh, Tuesday, 24th of August, 2021, there will be an interactive uh, session for artificial intelligence. So that will commence between the hours of 11 to 1 p.m. Uh, day three, which is Wednesday, uh, 25th, that will be for cybersecurity um, between the hours of 11 to 1 a.m. to day four, it will be for management information system between the hours of 2 p.m until 4 p.m. And day five, which is Friday, 27th August, 2021, it will, there will be an interactive session with uh, the administrative unit of ASTEL. And that one will be between the hours of 10 to 11. All this uh, is designed to make sure that certain gray areas that may occur in the course of your educational pursuit uh, is well polished and, and blunted. Uh, for now, may I request that we rise for the NOUN anthem to be followed by the national anthem.
once again, I want to thank you for being part of this um, wonderful beginning in your academic pursuits. Endeavor to join us uh, tomorrow for a continuation of our interactive session. Today is just day one. Uh, we have activities lined up up to Friday. Interactive sessions with the management information system, cyber security. Okay. The time of meeting is GMT. Yes, and of course on Friday uh, with issues with regards to the administrative units. On behalf of the Vice Chancellor of the National Open University of Nigeria, the Center Director of African Center of Excellence on Technology Enhanced Learning, staff and students of the center, I wish you all a successful journey in this academic expedition.